calling to let you know that Carolyn is a, a candidate for a cochlear implant. <laughs> Welcome to My Beautiful Cyborg. My name is Andreas Schwabi, and this is episode one. Seeing that it's such a milestone, I'm going to admit right off the top that things are moving really fast in Caroline's cochlear implant process, so most episodes aren't going to be structured like today's. We're really just going to have time for introductions and an update on where the process is at and where it's going. So we're going to find out how Caroline lost her hearing, why she's getting a cochlear implant, and how she reacted to the news. And finally, we'll talk about the last step Caroline went through, which was just this past Tuesday. But first, how Caroline got to this point to begin with. So, to tell her story, please meet my beautiful cyborg, Caroline. Hi. Hello. <laughs> so, tell us where you grew up and all that stuff that I already know. <laughs> well, I grew up in Mississauga, Ontario, and I had a pretty regular childhood. Played with my neighbor friends and fought with my brother and went to school and, you know, did all the usual stuff. I went to brownies and babysat kids in my teens and eventually got a part-time job and you know, what you would expect from an average childhood. Normal suburban childhood in Toronto, greater Toronto area. So you weren't always deaf. No. When did that change? Well, it changed uh, in my late teens. So I was nineteen twenty, and just started noticing that I wasn't catching everything and um, just struggled a little bit at my part-time jobs and School was never a big issue. Like, I was already graduated high school by the time I started mm. noticing. So it was at work. And you're not the only one in your family with hearing loss. Not at all. So tell, tell us about that. It's a group thing. <laughs> the family that <laughs> It's is really fun when together. we all get together. <laughs> yeah. Um, so in my mom's family, uh, pretty much all of her, all, everyone in, in her family's hearing impaired so all her aunts and her mom and my mom's pretty much deaf she's 83 now and doesn't have a lot of hearing at all and my brother also suffers hearing loss and wears hearing aids and uh, his son does too so hmm. okay so it's it's there's some genetic component or something like that that's one of the interesting things about sensory neural hearing loss is that there are a whole bunch of factors and there's actually a category that is none of the above it's like your hearing is bad we have no idea why so it's, it's, there's a lot of things that can affect it. Yeah. So how can you tell when your hearing is getting worse over time? Uh, so I've been aided for many years. I, I got my first pair of AIDS when you and I were newly bad mm -hmm. and I was 21 and uh, started off with a low power aid, the little in the ear ones that mm -hmm. just look like a piece of gum in your ear mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> eventually graduated to the behind the ear. Now we're, we're sort of in a, an early middle stage. You haven't gotten your implant yet, but you're going to soon. And so we're kind of in a position for the podcast where we're trying to keep everybody up to date, but also get them up to speed. And so there's a whole bunch of stuff that happens. So rather than rehashing too much of the past, we'll get to that with your audiologist later in another episode. But how did you get to the point where now you're getting a cochlear implant? I was, I was frustrated with my hearing. I still am. I mean, obviously. And these aids that I'm wearing currently aren't, aren't really cutting it for me anymore. Uh, and so it was time to, I assumed it was time for new aids, maybe higher power aids or or just a different brand or something like that. So, so we went to Costco um, because they're they're quite affordable there in terms of their their hearing aid selection. And the gal who did my hearing test, named Melanie, is has a cochlear implant. And after she did my testing, and we'd had a, a little chit chat conversation, and she was fantastic. She asked me if I would mind if she referred me to the Glen Rose um, as a as a potential candidate for a cochlear implant, and I I just assumed that ah they won't even look at me. <laughs> so I was I've, I'm overwhelmed that that this process started with a trip to Costco and a, and hearing test for new hearing aids. And by the way, uh, something that I uh, so I I deal with the public regularly and. 
um, oftentimes people will say to me, yeah, I'm starting to, hmm, I think I might be losing some hearing. And I always, always, <clears throat> pardon me, encourage them to go and at least get a hearing test. Just find out. All right, do you just think that? Are you just maybe tired and not paying attention or whatever? Or are you really losing your hearing? Because if you are, something that's really important that I found out quite a bit later uh, after having hearing loss for many years is that you you really need to aid an ear that has a hearing loss. It's very important to re- in, in terms of retaining speech recognition. If you don't aid that ear, your brain will kind of like kind of forget how to hear. Yeah, it It kind of atrophies. Right. Yeah. So please, if you think that you might be losing your hearing, just go and talk to an audiologist, book a test. It's not, it's not a big deal. You sit in a It's 80 bucks. And if you, like, what's the worst that happens is you get a pair of hearing aids or you need an aid and you hear better. That's the worst thing that happens. Right. The worst thing that happens is you spend 80 bucks on an audiology test and you didn't need it. But then you know. So what? Yeah. It's 80 bucks. And Just it's amazing. Just peace of mind then. Yeah. I mean, every time you go for a test, I always think, ah, I should probably go for a test. And, mm. Well, but. it's it's probably not a bad idea just in terms of he- hearing health. Mm-hmm. But generally speaking, people don't bother with that until they notice, oh, missing in, in uh, well, and missing it's not, words in, cra- in group conversation or I can't hear when like, I'm yeah. keep turning the TV up too loudly. But it's or, not just missing words. It's like when you miss words, people become paranoid because they aren't sure why they're missing conversations. They start feeling ostracized. People think you might be stupid. If you think anything, if you're even just questioning it, just go and get tested. It's not a, it's not a yeah. big deal. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't cost a lot. It's a good idea to do. So you've had the news for a week, and this is covering a lot of ground. So you've had the news for a week, and uh, what was it like the second you found out, that moment when you found out? It was just extremely emotional, I'll be honest. Because I just walked in with a little letter that I'd written so that you would actually be able to read it and not have any mistakes. So you wouldn't mishear what I said, which was, you're a candidate, you are getting a cochlear implant. Because I do often mishear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) And that does happen a lot. So, you know, I... I was thinking about that. There's, It's one thing to sort of have a hunch, wow, it really seems like I'm on the road to this, and this is really, I think this is going to happen. It's another, it really is another thing to get the official word that, no, this is actually going to happen. And I, 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 it's life-changing, so. Sensorineural hearing loss is the most common type of hearing loss and deafness where the root cause is the inner ear or sensory organ, which is the cochlea and associated structures, or the vestibular cochlear nerve or neural parts. Sensorineural hearing loss accounts for about 90% of reported hearing loss. It's generally permanent and can be mild, moderate, severe, profound, or total. There are both external causes of damage, including noise, infection, and ototoxic drugs, which is drugs that cause harm specifically to the hearing organs. There are also other causes, like genetic mutations. A common cause or exacerbating factor in sensory hearing loss is prolonged exposure to loud sounds for prolonged periods of time. Yes, including earbuds. We've reached the last segment of the podcast, and this isn't always going to be the last section, but today it is. Uh, And it's the current affairs. So yesterday you went for uh, a shopping trip. Talk about that. (laughs) Kind of an unusual shopping trip. I went to see uh, Mariah at the Glen Rose. And um, so the point of the visit was to just choose the device that they're going to be implanted, the the brand name. And uh, the two choices are AB, which is Advanced Bionics, or Cochlear. And I went with Cochlear. uh, And why did you pick Cochlear? Probably because of their, their, they were the first company that ever did an implant. Right. Uh, so I kind of have a little trust going there with them. Um, furthermore, they seem to really, really, really believe in this is a lifetime relationship that I've got with the company. They're not just going to let me. Well, leave. you're you're having a piece of medical equipment permanently implanted implanted on your skull. So Right. Now, I'm not saying that other brands don't believe in a lifetime commitment, but Cochlear is very vocal about that. Right. And they they offer a lot of support and um, they just seem to have really good numbers well, too. And, and you're really a people person, which is why you want a cochlear implant to be able to hear people. And it just the whole 
they just sort of seemed in line. It was right. that sort of harmony of, of values and everything. Exactly. And they're Australian. They're the Commonwealth. They, yeah. they, they have a weak dollar too. So it's all good. Exactly. So I got to pick, <laughs> I got to pick, uh, not only the, the brand, but also the, um, accessories that I'm going to be receiving and which, which ones are most important to me and that type of thing. Um, well, we can talk more about the, all of those bells that and stuff whistles. Later. And yeah. that device One of the, later. we're going to do an episode on, um, sort of the stigma, the placement and all that sort of stuff. But one of the interesting things that we're going to talk about is that there's some research that shows that placing a cochlear implant on the right side uh, aids in uh, rehabilitation of speech because there's just a faster connection between right. The, the right ear and the left hemisphere. Of yeah, the brain. and I, I think it's interesting that while that was, you know, mentioned to me during my consultation at the Glen Rose, it they never ever ever insist that you go with anything they everything is left up to you you're, you're very much part everything. of the team very very much so yeah. and yet um i just felt like it makes sense to implant my right side anyway i'm right-handed and and the uh you know research seems to show that that's a beneficial thing to do um so yesterday i officially chose the size uh, side that they're going to implant and also, one of the cool things I did yesterday in my shopping trip was I signed a bunch of release forms, and weirdly, that made it more real. Like, so why? What's so special about the release? I don't form? know because it talked about what is expected of me, and what I can expect from the procedure, what I can expect the weeks after the procedure, or the surgery, and. But what you also commit to. That's like exactly right. Like you promise, right. it's a promise of performance that, that you will do things. And bingo. And that is why, as I put my name on, I was smiling the whole time as I was reading, you know, you read what you're going to sign. So yeah, the one, the one paragraph was like, you will come every, you know, in three, six, nine, twelve, you know, 15, 18, 24 months for Eight. testing and, and rehab. Exactly. And all of those things. Um, my audiologist, um, Shasha has gone over all of that with me that, that I'm expected, like I'm, I need to go to those appointments. I'm thinking who wouldn't want to go to those appointments? Like who would want to skip that? Well, I mean, she's the one that you're, well, and we're going to get into this as well. This we're, we're covering a lot of ground, yeah. but the audio audiologist will really tune the device. So right. the, the processor, so you, c it really will work specifically for you in right. various circumstances. Yeah. So that's cool. So cool. Yeah, no, I just was, I was just going to say that yesterday was really exciting because it felt like finding out officially was one sort of, um, milestone. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's the word I was looking for. One milestone. And yesterday signing that piece of paper, it was so, it was weirdly liberating. Like, yes, this is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and kind of emotional, like, like, holy crap, this is going to happen. I don't know when, but it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. And that's the end of episode one of My Beautiful Cyborg. So uh, we're gonna do more of these as time goes on. This is a couple years at least. We're going to try to be really regular and keep you up to date every two weeks with at least a half hour show. Thanks for listening. 